The German economy is slowing down. It has been for more than a year. German GDP growth slides to six years low. Germany is now in a technical recession. The chief business editor of respected German broadsheet Die Welt called Germany the sick man of Europe. Bank of America Merrill Lynch is now tracking the recession in Germany. Their German GDP tracker has deteriorated to minus 0.1% quarter on quarter, mean that Germany is heading towards the two consecutive quarters of negative growth defined as a technical recession. Bank of America Merrill Lynch points to extremely weak factory orders as well as the yellow vests disruptions in France for the continued downturn. Britain, on the other hand, is the fastest growing European country in the G7. There are multiple reasons for this, one of which is, of course, the global economy as a whole is not doing well. The rapid slowing down of manufacturing in Europe's largest industrial hub has seriously weighed on employment, now declining for the first time in six years. October saw employment across the German private sector fall, even if only slightly, for the first time in six years. Germany has decided to cut 400,000 auto jobs in next decade as car production crashes, like Audi, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Volkswagen, and Porsche transition to electric car sales. The automotive industry in the country supports 800,000 jobs and indirectly supports 3 million more. Germany, and Europe in general, might be looking at a severe economic crisis. Some argue it's going to be up there with 1929, or 1921. Demographics are a problem for Germany, as for many other European countries. They have tried to solve these problems with immigration, but among unskilled migrants, of whom there are many, long-term unemployment is high. Demographics are hitting all the major Western countries hard. This isn't a problem that's 50 or 80 years away. Those times are the endgame. This problem is reverberating and hitting countries hard right now. Many European countries, hoping to solve demographic problems via immigration and also driven by humanitarian concerns, have ended up spending a lot of money on immigration. Germany sees migration-related spending of 78 billion euros through 2022, says a report. German banks are also having big problems. Deutsche Bank job cuts are the tip of the iceberg for the finance industry. And the German economy is getting into difficulties as the German industrial recession drags economy deeper into slump. In part, since Germany relies very heavily on exports, including exports to China, it's getting hit by Trump's trade war. China itself is struggling with demographic issues and with the fact that people are getting wealthier and aren't so willing to work for low wages anymore. But the real potential killer problem that some foresee has to do with debt. Greece, in particular, is able to repay its debts to German banks only because it has received three bailout loans. When you're paying loans off other loans, that's not good. If Greece should default, German banks will be in trouble. Some argue that the euro cannot work across such a wide area. Indeed, it probably can't work without closer European integration. That integration is proving elusive. The euro is priced ideally for Germany, and not ideally at all for Southern Europe. It doesn't look to me like the EU can survive in its current form. I think it will crumble into a series of looser agreements when even Germany has problems, that may be when things really start to go wrong. The dollar funding crisis is real and accelerating, as is the implosion of the German economy. And it's not just Germany anymore. The French PMI print was dreadful, and the whole of the composite PMI for the Eurozone staggers on contraction. What everyone needs to worry about now is the reversal against the massive move into European sovereign debt. These bond yields have defied gravity all year and cannot be sustained against a declining euro. Germany is in trouble and with it the entire European project. The souring outlook in Germany is a clear indication the Eurozone might not see a recovery this year. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. Germany is taxing the living hell out of its people. The ones with money are leaving. And they're taking their money with them. The euro was a banker's project. A single currency for the North American Union, another banker's project, has been included from the start. Yes, the German and French industry benefited because their economies were the strongest, but that was not the main point of the project. The project was to get the weaker economies like Greece to sell off state-owned assets at fire sale prices, which has happened. There are lots of problems with rot in Germany, but what else would you expect from a country that still has an occupation government of the World War II victors? 
the real government, the Weimar Republic, has been refused its rightful place. Almost all European countries were politically under socialist control when the euro started. Those socialist governments in pigs in France profited from the low interest rates that came with the absorption of the Deutsche Mark. Such low interest rates allowed the socialist governments to increase debts and to fight their biggest enemy, the small and mid-sized entrepreneurs. Through ever-increasing regulation by themselves and the EU, they destroyed entrepreneurs and their own national economy. Politicians seek power, not welfare for the people. Finally, about 50% of the employees were directly or indirectly employed by the government of Greece, in France the figure is 35%. Greece produced in 2015 only 35 national patents. A French car cannot measure up to a German car, for example. That is not necessary, because, before the euro, people may decide to spend 10,000 German marks less and drive a not-so-perfect car. But if Italy and France have to produce at the same costs, due to the euro, they need the same price, which is hard to get if the product is weaker. The Germans lost until the financial crisis because the pigs in France absorbed all the savings, no investments happened in Germany. Germans are the poorest people in terms of accumulated savings, real estate ownership, etc. So now the EU tries to regulate the German industry into death, so they become all equal. And yes, they will all be equally poor and diminished in Europe, because every other nation like Russia, USA, China, South Korea, India is pushing to stay competitive and create welfare. Neoclassical economics brought capitalism to its knees in the 1930s. Let's use it for globalization. This is going to be a suicide mission. Those 1920s problems have now played out globally. What Japan does in the 1980s, the US, the UK, and Eurozone do leading up to 2008, and China has done more recently. You can see debt rises much faster than GDP in the US in the 1920s as well. This is what happens when banks lend to inflate asset prices rather than activities that directly grow GDP. The People's Bank of China knows how to spot a Minsky moment coming, unlike the Fed, ECB, Bank of England, and the Bank of Japan. The Chinese know financial crises come from the private debt to GDP ratio and inflated asset prices. This is how the black swan flies under Western policymakers' radar. Our policymakers are looking at public debt and consumer price inflation, but the problems are developing in private debt and asset price inflation. Markets can be inflated with bank credit, and this has always been the Achilles heel of the markets. It is the very belief in the markets that gets people thinking they are creating real wealth by inflating asset prices. We do now know how to avoid a Great Depression by saving the banks. Leaving the debt in place causes the balance sheet recession, and this is why the Japanese economy has been flatling for the last 30 years. Richard Ku had studied what had happened in Japan and knew the same would happen in the West after 2008. He explains the processes at work in the Japanese economy since the 1990s, which are now at work throughout the global economy. Debt repayments to banks destroy money, this is the problem. Japanification, come on in, the water's fine. China was the last real engine of global growth, and they did see the Minsky moment coming, but this was was very late in the day. Since 2008 they have been growing by adding more and more debt, but they can't do that anymore. China was a big export market for Germany, so that is now suffering too. But according to the fake media in Germany, everything is just fine. Germany is far from any recession, in fact, they had a huge GDP growth of 0.5%. All these new jobs in the social industrial complex generating massive growth, the automobile workers will soon become social workers, helping the hundreds of thousands new Germans to integrate and the ladies from the white-collar work will become kindergarten nannies for the new breed. Nowadays, more than 40% under the age of 10 are so-called immigrants. As you see, all is fine over in Germany, the quote of state spending has recently gone above 50% of GDP, Germany's economy will become a perpetuum mobile in the near future. Massive job growth in state-financed sectors will generate massive tax increase for the state, which is then able to generate even more state-financed jobs. This is what I call an ingenious plan. The EU economic downturn has been and still is largely self-inflicted by policy stupidity. The EU is led by a subsidized and occupied Germany that has no sovereignty to lose anyway. 
The rotation of the Chinese economy into the next stage of their nation building will see the quid pro quo of taking and give move into the giving less and taking more phase. Time to make the ruling culprits cough instead of the hoi polloi. The people should take direct control of the government instead of allowing usurpers. Only when the avoidance of tax is eradicated will the people have any hope of avoiding totalitarian control by the pure and murderous greed of the money power and their gangsters. Even then, they will be opposed and subverted by the hordes of usurper gangsters. The furtherance of mind control and rule by fear are totalitarian tactics that are in everyone's face, but due to being indoctrinated already, the majority are oblivious. The bottom line is that the sheep get sheared. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.